I just printed out all of the recipe, well not all the recipes I'm going to be making today. Hold on, hello party people. Happy Thanksgiving, I hope you're having a wonderful holiday. It is definitely not Thanksgiving when you're watching this, unless you are watching this in 2021. Is the world still around? That's a major question. I actually need something else, I'll be right back. All right, I've got it. It's real life over here. Okay, I have problems. <laughs> it's probably not news to most of you, but I started out this Thanksgiving, which is like so different than any other Thanksgiving we've ever had, right? So initially I was like, you know what? We're only going to one Thanksgiving. It's on a smaller scale. I don't, I'm barely going to make anything. So I'm texting my, this is how I text. <laughs> I'm texting my family members what I plan to bring. We're all chiming in and I say like three things. But then I also include, well, you guys know me. I'll probably bring more. And then I started making the list of things that I wanted to make to bring. And then I just kept adding to it and adding to it. So we're just going to make it all. And you know what's better than Thanksgiving Day? Leftovers. And that is the, that's really the best part about Thanksgiving. Am I right? Other than the fact that you get to enjoy time with family. No pressure for gifts. It's my favorite holiday. It's the holiday season. Finally have my turkey hat that I've been dreaming about. What's on the menu today? I know that's your real question. Well, we have some Dunners. Yes, I said that. Sweet potato casserole, boring, but you have to have some staples. Caramel apple cream cheese spread, a wonderful appetizer. A lot of people in my family like to run late, so I like to bring a lot of appetizers. Bacon jam Brussels sprouts, I may add some carrots to that, sounds delicious. Cranberry jalapeno dip, another appetizer. I don't know how it is. I hope it's divine. I'll also say the cardinal rule, if you're having someone eat food that you make, the number one rule is to not make something new. Well, all of these things are new to me, so who cares? Oh my gosh, I added this to the list. <sighs> Hang tight, okay? So I was eating something from Trader Joe's the other day. It was a broccoli and cauliflower gratin, which I always thought was pronounced gratin, like Connecticut. And then I watched Ina Garden's recipe on cauliflower gratin and realized it's pronounced gratin. So here we are now. It was the most delicious thing I have put into my mouth all month long. Yes, I said it. So that is a must have for this Thanksgiving. Also going to make corn casserole. I went, okay, you guys, okay. So much to say, so little time. It's getting hot, so I need to take that off for a second. I went to the grocery store this morning. It's the day before Thanksgiving because tomorrow I want to enjoy time with my family, just like everyone else. I don't want to be stuck in the kitchen. So short story long, I went to the grocery store on Thanksgiving Eve. Do not recommend. All right, where were we? Oh, someone in my family requested one of my dishes that I've made with you before. It's the corn casserole. I think I made it last Thanksgiving or December, whatever, or Christmas. Okay, here are some that I haven't made. Super excited about. Well, all of them except for the corn casserole. Graham cracker pudding. And you guys, I called my Aunt Judy for this recipe because it's something that I haven't had in a year. Like, I don't know, 15-ish years I haven't had this recipe. I called up my Aunt Judy and I said, hey, you know that recipe that you make with, I think it's got like chocolate pudding and graham crackers you know how do you make that and she said with chocolate pudding and graham crackers <laughs> and I said oh my gosh I do have a chef's palate also random question do you guys pantomime a phone like this or like this <laughs> apparently that's supposed to tell how old you are <sighs> moving on pecan pie Okay, so many stories about this stuff. My family asked about buying apple pie. I said, I'm not buying apple pie, but I'll make you an exquisite apple pie. And then two other people in my family said, well, we're making an apple pie. And I said, I'm tapping out because guess what? Pecan pie is the more superior pie anyway. So I said, I'll bring that. But now that I look at my list of other desserts I'm bringing, I probably won't be bringing a pecan pie. But I wanted to ask you, short story long, Apple pie or pecan pie? I'm not even adding pumpkin to that equation. Actually, I will. What's your favorite pie? Everyone has a favorite. I mean, I'll eat them all, I'm just saying. Oh 
my heavens. And then I went on Pinterest to look at more recipes because I like to torture myself and found a recipe. It's technically like a Christmas recipe. I don't care, I'm making it for Thanksgiving. Peppermint holiday bars? Drooling, am I right? And then when I was on the phone with my Aunt Judy, oh my gosh, 20 minutes into this video, I haven't even told you everything we're making. Can you believe it? So I was on the phone with Aunt Judy. She gives me the dumb recipe for the chocolate pudding and graham crackers. And she says, but you know what's even better and easier? And I said, Aunt Judy, you gotta tell me. So she did. It is called peanut butter pie. She says it's one of the family favorites. I can't remember ever eating it. I don't think I've ever made it. So she says it's really easy. It's a no bake. A lot of these things are no bake slash cook, you know, prep before and then toss them in the oven later. And that's what's so wonderful about the day before Thanksgiving is you can get all the hard work done and then enjoy the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. Amen, hallelujah. Oh, one more thing on our list, Pope's bread. I need water already. <laughs> Don't forget to hydrate, purifies the soul. You know, I bit the side of my cheek. It hurt something fierce. <laughs> Where are my sweet potatoes? Uno, due, tre, cuatro. Dinner is served. <laughs> Don't we wish it was all that easy? Oh my gosh. Okay, okay, okay. And scene. You didn't know I left, but I did. Wentworth had a dentist appointment. Oh my gosh. Thank goodness for a Google Calendar and there are awesome alerts. All right, where were we? We were starting, we hadn't even started yet. So I am about to whip together this cranberry appetizer. In my food process. What the heck? What the heck? I can't find it. The recipe says not to use a food processor, but again, torture. Apparently I like it. In all seriousness, it says don't use this hat. It says not to use the food processor because the cranberries tend to liquefy, but this is how I feel about that. All right, I'm not chopping those by hand and you can't make me. All right, what, are we, what else are we adding to this? Two tablespoons of cilantro, a quarter cup of green onion, one to two fresh jalapeno peppers, should I keep the seeds in? All right. Oh my gosh, it already smells good. Pretty easy appetizer if you ask me. Also, it looks like the holidays, that green and red. Love it. All right, I'm gonna call that done. And you know what? I just read the instructions. <laughs> Do you expect anything else? So the ingredient list says 16 ounces of cream cheese whipped. Well, in the grocery store, they only sell the whipped cream cheese in 12 ounces. So that's what I got. But the instructions state to whip up two blocks of cream. It doesn't matter. You know what? Just spread some cream cheese down. Great. Gotta make a nice even layer because everyone's a critic, especially on the holidays. That is perfection. Oh my gosh, you know what I don't have on? An apron. I don't think I washed it since last time. Oh gosh, my hat won't fit. I got problems. Oh, you know what I forgot? Lemon juice. I thought about it in the grocery store buying some and then by the time I realized I forgot it, it was on the other end of the grocery store and I decided we'll live without it. Oh my word, if you guys could smell this. Look how festive this looks. I don't even really like cranberries. I bet you I'm gonna like the, <gasps> no, no, I forgot something. The main ingredient, get back. Oh man, well, it wouldn't be my kitchen if we didn't mess something up, am I right? No big deal. No big. Luckily, I'm only run one recipe in. Here's what I forgot. Three quarters cup of sugar. Why? Why is this an ingredient? I have no idea. It says just to fold this in, but I'm not gonna do that. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to because I forgot to put the blade in. <laughs> oh, Kim. Welcome to my life. Great. This is great. This is great. I feel like it would have been great without the sugar. I don't know, I'm just saying. Take two. <laughs> right in here. 
And now I'm gonna have to do a taste test. You're supposed to let it sit in your fridge overnight, cover it with some something, and let it sit. Oh yeah, that looks much better. Oh my, this is so festive. Now, if I was a true food blogger, I would have saved some cranberries and taken, you know, sprinkled some out here and made a nice little picture. Instead, this is my backdrop. I'm so fancy, guys. Doesn't this look divine? I don't know if you can really, if it's really catching all the colors on camera. This is spectacular. Let's do a little that action. Does that look good? Taste test. I'm not really sure what to eat it with, so I'm just eating it with a Ritz cracker. Oops, I think a Ritz cracker is a fantastic choice. Oh my word. Okay, first of all, these crackers are stale because someone opened the bag and then just threw it back in the pantry. That is my life with four kids. However, mm. all right, we gotta spread it back out. This is fantastic. Definitely a must make. It was so simple. And I would say use your food processor. Who wants to sit there and chop the cranberries? Not me. This was so good. Presentation, 10 out of 10. Taste, 10 out of 10. And the ease of making it, 10 out of 10. Even I messed it up, but it still turned out fine. Great, great, moving along. One recipe down, 20 more to go. Ooh, I need my food processor for this one too. Ugh, means I have to wash it. The next recipe is a peppermint marshmallow no-bake dessert. And you know what it doesn't say in the title? And it should because it's a huge draw for me at least. It's got Oreos. Oreos. You guys know I love the Oreo balls that I make. The bar form wasn't the best. So if you want a dessert that you don't have to sit there and like form balls, and dip them into chocolate. I feel like this is a great option. We're gonna find out together. Step one, Oreos and food processor. One for the chef. Delicious. Oh man, I forgot the blade again. Where is it? Uh, everyone makes mistakes in the kitchen. That's fine. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody has those days. Blend this up. everything's going good one third cup of butter right in there with it if you're on a diet today's not the day <laughs> do you see that smoke coming out <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a good sign or a bad all right I don't know now we press the crust into a 13 by 9 inch baking dish oh man some of the this, look at this this cookie didn't even crumple still got the insides oh my gosh Whatever, I'll just crush it with my hands. Ah, uh, no I won't, that's driving me crazy. Nothing in my life is easy, I'll tell you that. What is this, a shark tooth? What the heck was in my Oreos? All right, hold up. How can I show this to you? It won't recognize my finger on my touch screen because my fingers are covered. All right, what is that? Probably some kind of food that's been stuck in my food processor for Lord knows how long. Dare me to eat it? Oh, sick. If this one still has crumbs, I don't care. Okay, great, push it down. All right, now we mix some other stuff together. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. We melt the marshmallows, five cups of marshmallows, which I'm pretty sure is one bag. Three quarters cup of milk, got it. Do we mix it together? This is so weird. Oh my gosh, when's the last time you had a marshmallow? All right, I'll mix it in. And then it says to add peppermint extract right now, but won't that make it like, I don't know. I know when you're melting chocolate, you're not supposed to add extracts until it's all melted. But I'll follow the recipe, a quarter teaspoon. Boop. Melt it in your microwave. Once this is melted, you throw it in your fridge to cool for 40 minutes. Who has that kind of time? Apparently I do. While it's cooling in the fridge, you have to take it out and stir it uh, every once in a while. Otherwise, apparently it will harden and get ruined. So good thing I read that. All right, I am moving on to the cauliflower broccoli gratin. Am I saying that right? Ina Garden's so fancy. Where's my knife? So it calls for one three pound head of cauliflower. Can I tell you something? I had to buy an organic cauliflower. Cost me an arm and a leg. Better taste better. All they had left on the grocery store shelves. Another reason not to shop the day before Thanksgiving. I wonder if you can make this with frozen broccoli and cauliflower. I feel like that would make things easier too, right? 
You probably can. But like, it's Thanksgiving, so I'm trying to be a little fancy. Oh my gosh, there's visible dirt on here. Or it's mold. Hard to tell. I'm just cutting around the core to get it out. I don't know how much a head of cauliflower weighs. I feel like that's not three pounds. So I am glad that I got the broccoli because I can't imagine making a whole dish just with this amount of cauliflower. So you can either break off the florets or cut them. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut them. I'm out of reasons, I'm out of rhyme But I'll only tell you that I'm out of time I'm sick of love songs, I'm tired of this And I wanna tell you straight just like it is You're watching me like you want me But you're still holding back, still holding back Honestly, you're annoying me With the way that you keep playing Show me your love like it is, like it is I cut the stalks off. I know you could save these for soups, but like, have you met me? I'm gonna throw my veggies into a, whoa, it's hot, into a pot of boiling water. I need a bigger cutting board. Okay, I'm gonna let the cauliflower and broccoli boil for just about five minutes. We don't wanna cook it all the way through because we are gonna throw it in the oven, but I'm moving on to the sauce. So about as long as it takes to make the sauce, then the veggies should be done. And we're making over here a bechamel sauce. Bon appetit. I'm so French and fancy, so basically, it's really simple. The cheese sauce, delicious. You let four tablespoons of butter melt, that's half a stick of butter, and then you add three tablespoons of flour. And I thought typically for a roux like this, it's equal parts, fat and flour. But I guess Ina Garden makes her own rules, so we're just gonna mix that together. And this is gonna thicken up the sauce and be delicious. Just let that raw flour taste cook through. And then we're going to add, and then to your hot roux, you add two cups of milk. So Ina Garden says hot milk, and I should probably listen to that, but I added cold milk. From what I know, and maybe this isn't like a typical roux for bechamel sauce, I don't know. Don't listen to me, that's what I did. I've seen people do cold and hot, so I just did my own thing here. Also, I've learned when you have a hot roux and cold milk, that means no lumps. So that's what we're doing. I'm just gonna stir it until it thickens up a bit. Oh, mother of pearl. This is what I get for not reading the directions. So you're supposed to melt two tablespoons of butter, Lord almighty, three tablespoons of flour. Okay, okay. Well, that's what we did wrong. Oh well. Gotta do something wrong every recipe, right? It'll be fine. Ooh, look at that bubble. <laughs> it's so steamy, you can't even see it bubbling. Let me try to zoom you in. Hold me close to Tony Danza. Look at my cool whisk. Isn't that amazing? All right, we're gonna scold that. We're gonna take it off the heat. Ah, uh, shoot. Shoot, 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 oh, man. That's what I'm saying, guys. Like, don't even worry about things. Look, we messed it up and it's still nice and thick and creamy and delicious. So you just add a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg and then some black pepper. Oh, yeah. It's not the holidays without a little bit of nutmeg. And, oh my gosh, here's the kicker. Okay, so Ina Garden's real fancy. Well, most of the recipes I read called for Gruyere cheese. Ugh. Do you know how expensive Gruyere cheese is? Too rich for my blood. So I'm also making this for kids. So half a cup of, what is this? The sharp cheddar goes straight in there and you're just gonna melt it. We're also gonna throw about half a cup of Parmesan cheese into this as well. Fresh grate it. Oh yes, that is delicious. Also, you notice I didn't measure. Well, I measured with my hands. Leave your measuring cups in the cupboards. You don't need them. Oh, look at that. Okay, we need a close-up of this. Yeah. You see that magic? Oh yeah. You know what, if it was up to me, if it wasn't my first time making this recipe, I would double the amount of broccoli and cauliflower. I mean, I don't know how, Ooh. I don't know the ratio sauce to vegetable is. Oh my, this can't be healthy. There's no stinking way. But you know what? Gonna be delicious. Well, wouldn't you know it, I just read the recipe again. It said, oh, hold on, this is Christmas, hold up. I've got some holiday appropriate spatulas over here. Okay, so I read the recipe again and it said, pour some amount of cheese on the bottom. I forgot how much. And then pour the cauliflower on, I don't care. I'm just gonna mix it up, perfect. 
Look at that. In a garden who? Yeah, I'm gonna need more broccoli and cauliflower. Oh my gosh, this could serve one, me. That's how delicious this is. But we're not even done. Now we're gonna make the top coat. I brought, I bought breadcrumbs for this. You need a quarter cup of breadcrumbs. Am I speaking? Your Ina Garden made her own breadcrumb. Can I say breadcrumbs? Breadcrumbs. I'm sure Ina Garten made her own breadcrumbs in her own food processor, and she probably grew the wheat in her backyard garden. That's not how we roll here. And then you need some cheese. I don't know how much, a quarter cup, cool. And two tablespoons of melted butter. Did I say that? Maybe some Parmesan cheese too, why not? It is the holidays after all. All right, let's get stuffed. You pour this right, oh my gosh. You need to see this closer. Do you have a good view there? Holy fajoli. This is what makes Thanksgiving my favorite holiday, ladies and gentlemen. And at this point, you can just put it in the fridge until you're ready to cook it, or you can cook it. Up to you. Okay, I tidied up a little bit for, well, and I mean a little bit. There's still cheese all over this place. We've had a million interruptions, but that's okay. What are we working on? It's been 40 minutes. I did stir it every 10 minutes or so. That's good enough. Where's the recipe? Oh my gosh, my hat. All oh, right, it kept falling. Oh my gosh, all right. This is such an easy recipe, as are all of these recipes, am I right? You know what, last time I made something with Cool Whip, I had a spoonful of it. Do people eat this straight out of the tub? I am not an ice cream eater. This is delicious. Holy moly, 16 ounces. What do, how much do I need? 16 ounces. The whole container goes right into the marshmallow mixture and then you just fold it in like so. Is Cordon Bleu ready for me yet? Been on the wait list for a while. I know I need something. Oh, you know what else you put in here? Okay, and here's how, where I'm gonna deviate from the rest. Well, maybe not this time. Okay, so much to say. Let's take a lick first. So good. Maybe I should get a whisk. Oh, here's a whisk, my dough whisk. Oh yes, coming together so much better. Are we recording? Okay, Alex just took the kids to the park. Hallelujah, that means I will have more than 10 uninterrupted minutes. Have you guys seen that meme? It's like Dolly Parton, oh, you know, if you work from home. Work in 9 to 9, 10, 9, 15 to 9, 25. <laughs> That's how I feel, 10 minute increments and then someone always has a catastrophe I have to tend to. All right, let's move that along over here. So the recipe calls for Hershey chocolate bars. Well, I couldn't find them in my grocery store. I guess they were probably at the checkout. Anyway, I didn't buy them. So I'm just gonna use this large one. Okay, here's what I wanna say. You're supposed to fold the chocolate into this marshmallow, you know, whipped cream mixture. I just feel like ugh, it's gonna be a bite, but this feels pretty soft. It is Hershey's after all. But what I thought, I'm just gonna give it, oh my gosh, it's her to chip. It's actually not, my knife is that dull. I was thinking, since it's like pepperminty, I thought a good substitution, if you don't want Hershey's, is to add those York peppermint patties. They're soft, they're pepperminty. I don't know, I just thought that would be a good idea, so I thought I'd share that with you. Or, if you wanna kick it up a notch, well, I thought about chopping some Oreos up and throwing them in there because, hello, Oreos, and then I thought, well, it'll probably get soft. And then I thought, Reese's, you know? So whatever you wanna do. I use recipes as a guideline, you guys know that. Okay, we're gonna just scoop that right in. Oh, heaven. Heaven, don't you just feel like a baker when you cut chocolate with a knife? And then folding it in, oh my, somebody call Food Network, I swear. I swear. Right over top of your Oreo crust. <gasps> you know what would make this even easier? If you just made it into a pie because I know that they sell Oreo pie crust. Oh my gosh, let me lick it, delicious. Oh wow, that peppermint is something, woo. And then you just put this in your fridge to harden and then you can throw sprinkles over top of it. Do you do that before it hardens? That's a good question. What a way to make a living. I don't know if I was just recording that, but I threw on some holiday sprinkles, Christmas colors because Thanksgiving sprinkles are hard to come by, and also I realized the balls are in there, Ugh, but we went too far, couldn't take them off, so I just went with it. Oh my, what is next? 
feel like we're moving right along. Okay, we made that, we made that, we made that. Okay, let me share with you two desserts and then we'll make something healthy. I need water. So I can make a sweet potato casserole or I can make the pudding or, you know, dessert is better. You know what I mean? I don't know where I wrote the recipe down. Well, crap. Found it. Aren't some of the best recipes written like this? Oh no. Oh man. Every time is this gonna happen? I know I just bought some. I know I just bought some. Ah! I knew I just bought some. Super simple recipe. We're making, what is it called again? Peanut butter pie. Ah! Whoops. I think this is the first time I'm using one of these uh, ready pie crust. Seems simple enough. You literally just dump all of the ingredients together, mix them, and then pour them into the pie crust. Another no-bake recipe. We love that. Half a cup of peanut butter. I'm just eyeballing. Pretty sure that's what my aunt does. Where do you think I learned it? Half a cup of powdered sugar. One block of cream cheese. I'm gonna soften it in the microwave. Same measuring cup I had breadcrumbs and cheese. Welcome to my life. I just softened it for 30 seconds. Oh man, my kitchen's a mess. Is it really Thanksgiving if your kitchen isn't a complete disaster? And then 16 ounces of this Cool Whip. And you know what? Publix this week had it buy one, get one free. And these were the last two tubs. So pretty sure that's the universe's way of saying, Kim, make this pie. My aunt said she made four. I'm gonna whip this up. Oh, oh yeah, well, that's not gonna work. I might have to wait for it to soften up a little bit. Eh, who has time? How about a taste test? Oh my gosh, you know what it tastes like? One of those like ice cream things that you get and it's like whipped. A milkshake? Like a peanut butter milkshake. Oh my gosh. It's not a milkshake. It's like thicker than a milkshake. I don't know. I don't get out much. Also, I don't like milkshakes or ice cream. But that's what this tastes like. You should call it Cool Whip Pie. There's more Cool Whip in this than anything else. All right, dump this into the pie shell. Oh, well, that is a hearty serving. My kids are definitely going to lick that bowl when they get home. And then... For all those judges handing out Michelin stars on Thanksgiving, we have to make this look like perfection. Now, this is my kind of pie. No saucepan required. Oh my wow. But wait, there's more. On top, I'm just gonna cut up some Reese's. <laughs> Who else loves Reese's? You know what I should have done? My kids still have a ton of Halloween candy left. I should have just gone through their Halloween candy and gotten Reese's out. It's gonna give it a nice chop. Oh my gosh, I feel so fancy. This might be one of the best things I've ever made. I'm not even lying. If you like Reese's, if you like peanut butter, if you like living, you might wanna make this pie. That's how good it is. All right, I'm just gonna sprinkle these pieces on top. Oh, everybody. These aren't sprinkling as nice as I thought they would. Good enough. And there it is, the money shot. This is why we do what we do. <laughs> oh my goodness, guys, that is delicious. And I haven't even had a true piece. Tell you what, it is a great time to whip out these pecans because I need some sustenance. By the way, I store my nuts in the freezer, they last forever. We're moving on, so good. I should make a pecan pie. I don't think I've ever had a sweet potato casserole. Definitely never made one, but from what I gathered, all of the recipes look almost identical. Prep time, 15 minutes. We'll see about that. All right, what do we do? What are we talking about? I got a phone call and I ate my weight in pecans and now my battery's dying. Super. Five years later, I finally went through this uh, roll of plastic wrap. Do we need this bowl? What do I need? I can use my hands. I have cooked my sweet potatoes. I'm just gonna peel the skin off. I just cooked them in the microwave, mostly because my oven is kind of broken. <laughs> Gotta be an easier way to do this. Okay, so you have to tell me, do you, wait, 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 do you make yams or sweet potatoes? I know there's a big difference. And also, do you like sweet potato pie? I don't think I've ever had sweet, what is happening? I've never had sweet potato pie before. This is the worst thing I've ever done to a potato. You need two pounds of potato. Ugh, I'm just use my hands. My two favorite tools because they're at the end of my wrists. 
You know what, I'm gonna do four because I just asked the Goog and he said two pounds is approximately four sweet potatoes. Sick, I am making a mess. And now I'm wondering, did I just do five sweet potatoes? Oh well, two large eggs, I think. Butter, brown sugar, vanilla. Two tablespoons of butter, half a cup of brown sugar, and I know there is a debate about using dark brown sugar or light brown. I have light brown, so that's what I'm using. Oh, you know what? I thought I wanted to make a healthy sweet potato casserole. Huh. A little bit of salt, and I guess you mix it. Oh, you know what? It calls for vanilla as well. Oh, you're kidding me. Kidding me, you're kidding me, you're kidding me. Ah, found it. Guess where it was? The last place I looked. Ooh, I thought I didn't have any, and I had just gone to the store this morning to get peppermint extract, and then I got almond extract, because I know I'm out of that. So I would have lost my mind if I didn't have any vanilla extract. You know what, if I was a true chef, I would have washed my KitchenAid and mixed this up really well. No one wants chunky bits of sweet potato in their casserole. Butterfly, uh-uh, that's, oh, let me see your casserole. Anyone? Now we spread this in a nice casserole dish. See this casserole dish? It's nice. Wait, aren't you supposed to put marshmallows in here? Sugar, flour, salt, nuts. Sugar, flour, salt. Nuts. Add together sugar, half a cup, flour, three tablespoons, salt, and a quarter cup of nuts. And I'm gonna do more than that because I want to. I'm the one eating it. I'm just gonna give them a rough chop. Uh-oh, I forgot, Karen's watching. She's yelling at me to get a cutting board. We'll live. Okay, mix this together. Cool, cool, cool. And two tablespoons of butter cooled, but who has time for that? And you just top the sweet potato casserole with this mixture, and ooh, you cooled up. Get a little closer, Tony Danza. Will you look at how beautiful this is? You can cook it right away. I am going to wait until tomorrow. 350 for about 25 minutes. Oh, right, and then that's when you can add the mini marshmallows if you want to, and then stick it in for another, I don't know, few minutes. Cool! Moving on to the pudding graham cracker recipe, literally the two things that you need. I got three boxes. I wasn't sure how many I would need. I'm gonna make all three and then if I don't use all the pudding, hey, my kids have pudding to eat tonight. Which by the way, what do you eat the day before Thanksgiving? Or even like morning of? Oh gosh, I don't know how to make this. Okay, hold on, what do we do? Oh, that's easy. Two cups of milk. All right, let's just do two boxes actually. You know, I try to think like, oh yeah, I'm gonna meal plan for the week of Thanksgiving. But you know what? We just end up eating like the easiest things I can think of. And two, four cups, cool, cool, cool. I guess we just whip it, whip it good for five minutes or two minutes, eh, it doesn't matter. Speaking of breakfast, I did buy some brioche bread to make like really fancy French toast in the morning because I am doing all of the prep today. So hopefully, I will have the energy to do it tomorrow morning. All right, I am just lining up. Oh, look at how perfect this is. I'm lining up some graham crackers on the bottom. Now I have this lovely pudding. How am I gonna do this? That was super simple. One time I tried to make pudding with almond milk. It didn't work. So I'm just going to make one layer of the pudding. It's like a chocolate lasagna. Wait, wait, wait. You know what she called it? What my aunt called it? An icebox cake. She's so old school. All right, one more layer of the graham crackers. We're gonna continue this trend until there's nothing left. Come on in, come on up, come on over for the merriest time of year. Come on up, come on in, get together for a good time, smile, my dear. Come on in, come on up, come on over. We'll be dancing round the tree. So let us have a swinging Christmas just like one, two, three. Well, it doesn't get much simpler than that. And then for the topping, I'm just going to crush some graham cracker crumbs over top. Oh, does that look homemade or what? Aunt Judy who? It's incredible. Absolutely incredible. Now the rest of these are gonna go stale. Oh my word, you guys. I feel like I've been cooking all day long. Got a sink full of dishes. 
I didn't share the corn casserole recipe with you, but I'll share the recipe. Do you know what I mean? Here it is. I'm on the fence about making this because my sister-in-law said she was gonna make it, so I'm still chatting with her about it. Instead of using dairy-free cream cheese, I made this when we were vegan, just do sour cream. And it's easy as corn casserole. Moving on to one of my favorite recipes. I always save this to the end because it is kind of weird. No one in my husband's family enjoys it. But it is one of my favorite things. Guys, I eat, it's supposed to be like a dessert bread. It's an Italian, they call it junk bread because you just put a bunch of junk in a bowl and it's delicious. Probably a dessert bread. I eat it for breakfast, like I said. It is so good. So we start off with, well, so it's a loose recipe. Here's the recipe and it's just kind of like passed down from generation to generation. So I can almost guarantee you the measurements aren't correct. Four cups of nuts, and I probably do more like six. One, because I love nuts, and two, because I somehow feel like it's healthier if I add a lot of nuts. Very calorie dense, I will say that. And you can add any type of nuts that you want or have. Brazil nuts if you're rich. And then about a cup and a half of raisins. Just two heaping, that's great. You saw the recipe calls for orange peels or something like that, whatever that is. So I'm going to add in cherries, cause why not? Just the whole bag, what am I gonna do? Give that a toss. You can end here if you just want trail mix. That's basically what this is, trail mix and bread. Oh boy, the jelly's giving us trouble again. Ah, got it. My muscles are getting bigger. 16 ounce jar of grape jelly. Ugh, I bought jam. Whatever, tomato, tomato, right? And take it out now. You know what, there was someone next to me in the grocery store, and do you guys ever do this where like, I felt like I had to rush, cause she was like waiting for me to get out of her way, even though I moved like twice, I don't know, it was weird. So then I ended up grabbing jam, cause I was rushing. Okay, and then one, is it a whole container of this crap? Grape juice concentrate. Let's do the whole thing, why not? Go big or go home. Then you just mix this. So weird, but like low key, doesn't it look pretty? You know what, last time I went to Ikea, I bought like four wooden spoons. I have no idea where they are. Oh crap, I almost forgot the honey. One pound, eight ounces of honey. I have still yet to figure out what that equates to in cups, so I just dump a bunch in. <laughs> I don't know, that's about good. And now you melt the chocolate. This is what makes this bread so delicious. So I have, oh, is this two pounds? 10 ounces, well, that's not two pounds at all. Oh my gosh, look at these monsters. Normally I do milk chocolate, but last year my dad told me his secret was to use dark chocolate. And since this was on sale at Publix today, I said, okay. So I'm just gonna melt this in the microwave, 30 second increments, and stir it in between. Well, isn't this what dreams are made of? And I'm just gonna combine the chocolate. Oh, dreams. That looks exquisite and then mix that right in. Kind of looks like sludge. Okay, here is the hard part. Since I have less than Arnold Schwarzenegger muscles, I have to mix in the flour in batches using my KitchenAid. I don't know how my dad does this part. Uh, it is extremely difficult. So I just add a little bit of the mixture into the KitchenAid. I got scissors to cut the flour bag open. Thanks, Kim. All right, I'm just gonna add a couple of cups of flour to start and then see what that consistency looks like. Oh yes, when it's hard for the KitchenAid to mix it, that's when you know it's good to go. I have this whoopie pie pan and I have found that it is wonderful to make these little loaves. So I just grease it and then I have wet hands and I take the mixture and I just form it into the pan. And this holds its shape. It's not going to rise or fluff out or anything like that. I'm going to make the rest of them 375 for about an hour. You having fun down there? You making some noise? <laughs> so this is Thanksgiving morning. I am finishing up my meal prep for the day or food prep for dinner, whatever it is. Who cares? So I ended up nixing the, it was like caramel apple appetizer with cream cheese. It's basically cream cheese with caramel sauce and toffee bits. I couldn't find any toffee bits, so I just nixed it and used something else. But 
Um, right now I am making the Brussels sprouts and I'm cutting up some carrots. I'm just adding it to the recipe. I actually didn't show the whole recipe because I am not a professional YouTuber and <laughs> I thought I would just come on here and share with you. Obviously I will have it linked below if you're interested in trying it. It was okay. It wasn't like the best vegetable that I've ever had. Um, but I just cut up a bunch of veggies, Brussels sprouts and carrots and bacon, main ingredient. And then when it's after you toss it in the oven, you cook it at like 400 degrees for, I don't know, until it's done, 30 minutes or so, 25, 30 minutes, and maybe 425, whatever you want. And then you mix a little bit of apricot jam or jelly with some apple cider vinegar, and then you spread it on top of that. I, all, I halved the mixture because it was very apple cider vinegary, and that's not really my thing, but it did taste good with the vegetables. It gave it a little something different, a little something extra on Thanksgiving. So if you want to try that recipe, you can go ahead and do that. And, oh my gosh, I almost forgot. I did end up making the corn casserole, a very simple recipe. I actually screwed it up. Can you believe it? <laughs> believe it or not. So the recipe calls for sour cream, eight ounces of sour cream. Well, I'm an idiot and forgot about this, even though I just told you like 10 minutes ago. So I, oh, Aunt Meredith, always getting in my space. Anyway, so I forgot that it called for sour cream and I added cream cheese like an idiot. And now I spent like 20 minutes trying to cream that cream. Anyway, learn from my mistake. I think that's the lesson throughout this entire video. <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. So it's one block of cream cheese, I think two eggs, uh, half, one stick of butter melted, and then one can of cream of corn, and one can of kernel corn, and then one little box of Jiffy cornbread mix. And you know what? I have made this recipe with two cans of corn, like normal corn. And here I am realizing, oh my gosh, Kim, you are an idiot. So I just added some sour cream anyway. Anyway, it turned out great. Whatever corn you choose to use, drain it. It's going to be great. Oh, and here are the final products. You see the corn casserole on the left, the broccoli and cauliflower gratin, some pecan, uh, what is that? Not shortbread. It's sweet potato. And then I am going to share with you just some moments from Thanksgiving that we had, just some sweet little moments. And I hope you enjoy yourself. I hope you had a great holiday, or I hope you had a great weekend with your family. Well, the music was short-lived. <laughs> But I wanted to add, this was my first year having a deep fried turkey. Have you guys ever had it before? Look how crazy it looks. Oh, by the way, we were watching Home Alone, best movie of all time for the holidays. I mean, best movie, I don't know, one of the best. Anyway, have you ever had a turkey like this? It looked crazy on the outside, tasted absolutely delicious on the inside. I, did I share with you some of the appetizers that we had? Oh, and it was Eleanor's birthday the day after Thanksgiving this year. So we sang a little song for her birthday. Uh, and here's Wentworth being a scoundrel. All right, that's all I have to say, I think. Well, not really, but, you know. Oh, Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree. Such pleasure do Well, that is it. Thank you guys so much for hanging out and cooking with me. I hope you enjoyed this Thanksgiving cook with me. I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving or just a wonderful day in general. I know we made a lot of delicious foods. These definitely aren't specific to Thanksgiving, as if I had to tell you that. I'll definitely be making every single one of these things again because they are delicious. I hope you enjoy the recipes. If you did, subscribe, put a little happy in your day, and I will see you next time. Bye!